Hey there, I'm sure you hear a lot of people talking about cloud, but do you know what's the real cool thing about cloud? Well, you as developer can take full advantage of it, even if you're at the beginning stages of your journey to become a software developer. And to prove it, I'll show you how easy it is to set up an Azure SQL database that you can use to play around or build some real world software. So stay tuned for more information. Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer. In this video we'll talk about Azure SQL databases and C and we'll see exactly how we can use C -sharp to send queries and retrieve some information from Azure SQL databases. This is a very important topic in my opinion because cloud technologies are not the future I would say but are already the present and having a cloud skill set is a very important thing for any developer. So doing this video and tutorial it's a very good opportunity for you to get your hands dirty both with Microsoft Azure and C -sharp. What we'll do throughout this video is walk through the entire process of creating the Azure SQL database and using this database in a small C -sharp program to retrieve some data. So let's get started with it and let's switch to the Azure portal. This is a very blank and empty Azure portal because I removed everything from the dashboard to make it easier for you to follow this tutorial. The first thing that we would have to do is create a resource group. Resource groups are very important because they allow us to bundle resources that belong together. For instance, if you are a software developer and work for several customers, you could have a resource group for each customer. And each resource that you need for that specific customer, you would put it in that specific resource group. Let's go ahead and create a resource group. The new blade of creating a resource group will open and here we can provide a name. Let's name it dev ramp up or only dev ramp. This is my subscription and I want to host my resource group in West Europe, but you have here a lot of regions from which you can choose from depending also where you live. Now we have to simply click on create. Resource group are really nothing fancy and that's, there's nothing complicated about them. You just have to create them and then you can attach different resources that you will create afterwards to the resource group that you desire. Now we have a new resource group and if we go now on resource group, it should be visible here. And that's it. Now what we could do here, since we are in this resource group, we could, let's say, create a resource. So we can go ahead and search for databases. Now what we want to do is, as said, to create Azure SQL database. Here, okay, SQL database and a new blade will open for us with a lot of information. So if you want, you can simply read through it. It could be useful if you're not already familiar with Azure and Azure SQL. Then if you click the create button, a new blade will open for the configuration of the SQL database that we want to create. First of all, we have to choose a database name and let's call it testdb because it's a test database. The subscription is the same. Then in resource group, you can use existing and I will choose this dev ramp up resource group. Here, this is a very important thing. When you select the source, you can start really with a blank database and this is mostly the scenarios where you really build an application or if you just want to play around and test how things work and so on, there is also a sam sample database called AdventureWorks LT. And for our needs, this sample is good enough, so we will choose this sample. The next step is also very important because we have a database or we want to create a database. But this database needs also to be attached to a SQL server. And even if we don't create a new VM, we still have to define some settings for the SQL server where our database will be hosted. First of all, we have to provide a server name and let's provide dev ramp SQL and server admin. Let's 
make it very unsecure we call it admin and we have also to provide a password okay admin is not okay so my admin and we have also to provide a password since this is really a demo and however nobody would be able to access this database from outside and you will see exactly also why I will also write here a password because we will use it throughout this video and this password would be dev ramp 01 and confirm password dev ramp 01 and I want it to be in the same region. It's very important that you remember your admin and your password because you will use it to connect to this database and uh, we can click on select and now the SQL server is configured. The next step we have to choose a pricing tire. Now that's also a very important part because depending on how many resources we need, we would pay more or less for that Azure SQL database. For instance, right now we could choose a standard tire and we could use 10 DTUs and this will generate a cost of 25 euros per month, which is not very much. The whole idea of DTUs, what are these DTUs? If you click on them, you will go to this help page in the Microsoft documentation and DTUs are database transaction units. What does this mean? This means that here you are not built for CPU, for memory, for storage, but you are built for all these things bundled together. So one DTU assures you that you have a certain CPU time available, a certain memory available and so on. So if you have more DTUs for your tire, then you would have more resources available. 10 DTUs, however, is just fine for any database that we would use for testing purposes or even if we want to develop some very small applications to use ourselves. So let's click here on apply and this should do it. Now, since we have already chosen this sample database adventure works, we cannot choose the collation here. So let's also pin this to the dashboard and click create. Now the, data, the database will be created. This process might take around two, three minutes. I would say not more than that. So we don't want to wait until this database is created. So uh, I'll just pause this video and we'll come back when the database is up and running. If we go back and check our resource group, we will see that we have right now three resources available. We have this dev ramp up SQL, which is the server. And we have two databases. One is the system database, the master database. And the second one is of course the test database that we have created with that sample adventure works database. Now, a very important step to take here is to click on this SQL server because there is something very important that we need to configure here. And if you scroll here a little bit down, you would see that you have firewalls and virtual networks. And if you click on it, you see that, uh, well, there is some configurations that you can make here. The idea behind is that this server is put behind a firewall and nobody should be access to, uh, nobody should be able to access this SQL server. But the problem is we want to access this SQL server from outside because when we run our SQL program, it will run locally on our machine and not in Azure. So what we need to do here is add client IP. And if you see, if you click on add client IP, your current IP address is already listed here and you can simply click on save and this should do it. It would take a few seconds and then this client IP is added to the firewall rule. And this means that we will be able, or I will be able in this case, to access this database from my Visual Studio client. And a next thing that we have to do is to find a way to connect to this database test DB. So if we click on it, we can see here a lot of information about this database. If we scroll down a little bit here, we will have here connection strings. And if you click on connection strings right under ado.net, 
we have a connection string that we can use in our Visual Studio client. So make sure that you can copy that and for now you can leave this Azure portal alone and we'll switch back to Visual Studio. The first thing that we'll do here, we'll store the connection string that we have in a variable. So let's have a string con str, which is our connection string and equals new string, of course. And what we have here is to copy or to paste the connection string that we've copied from the Azure portal earlier. Now, before we go further here, there are some things that we have to change. Because you see that under user ID, you have to provide your username, which is the admin username that you have created when defining the SQL Server settings. And this would be my admin and the password, which would be dev ramp zero one. Okay. And now everything should be fine. We have the connection string here. There is one thing that I want to underline in this point. Storing this connection string in a variable is not really the way to go when you develop what I would call real life applications. Normally you would use some JSON configuration file like appsentings.json or configuration.json or whatever you might need or name your configuration file. Or even better, you can define your connection strings as an environment variable. And that's the most secure way to go. However, for our test application, it's okay if we use this uh, connection string as a string variable. The next thing that we have to do is to see exactly how we can connect to this Azure SQL database. And before we go and show how we can do this in C Sharp code, what I would like to do, and I think it's very interesting, is that you can bring the Azure SQL database in your Visual Studio client and take a look at the tables and so on. So that's exactly what I want to do right now. In Visual Studio, if you go under view and you go on SQL Server Object Explorer, you would have a new sidebar that opens shortly, which contains some SQL Server connections. And we could simply add another connection here. And Visual Studio is already good or has a good integration with Microsoft Azure. So we can here connect, click on Azure and it will look up our databases that we uh, have here. So the server name is not listed here. Let's, okay. Okay, and the test DB is the server. We just have to provide the password, which is dev ramp zero one. And remember this password and click connect. And what we'll see is that right now we have connected in our Visual Studio client to the Azure SQL database that we have created. And we can go ahead and take a look at the database and we have here the test DB. So this is that sample adventure works database. And under tables, we have in external tables, all the tables that we would need for this tutorial to work. Now I see that it takes a little bit until it really connects to the Azure database and the tables are displayed. So I will be back shortly. We are back now and here are the tables that we have in this database. And the SQL query that we will run a little bit later does a lot of things with customers. So if we go on this table customers or sales LT customers, we have here the option to view data. Now, once again, since I don't have the really fastest computer on earth, it could take a little bit until the data is displayed. And yeah, that's it. So this is all the data about customers that we have in this SQL database. And each customer has an ID and a lot of other information. And that's it. That's how you can bring your Azure SQL database into Visual Studio if you click on SQL Server Object Explorer and make a new connection to your newly created SQL database in Azure. And you can then here play around and check all the informations that you have at your disposals and so on. So yeah, that's fairly cool, I would say. 
we can go then to the next step, which of course would be how can we connect programmatically to this Azure SQL database and retrieve some useful information for us. And let's check it out how we can proceed here. Since this is a console application running on .NET Core, the first thing that we would have to do is to import some NuGet packages. Why this? Because we need some classes that are not available by default in the .NET Core class library. So we can simply go on manage NuGet packages and search for the packages that we need in order to create to connect to a SQL server. And the first library that we would need is system data common. And we see here as a first hit and we can click install and this would install all the dependencies needed. We have to accept all license agreements and so on. Now this is installed. The next thing that we would need is systemdata.sql client. And that's the library that we need or the NuGet package that we need. And once again, we install it and everything should be fine afterwards. Good. So what we, we have done now, we have imported some NuGet packages that contain classes that once again are important for us when we want to connect to an Azure SQL database. But these exact classes can be used also to connect to any SQL database. It could run on SQL Server or even on SQL Lite and so on. Now let's go one step further and see exactly how we can proceed here. First of all, I would write some code here and then I will explain exactly what this code means. This piece of code might seem a little bit strange to some of you. However, the first thing to note here is we have this SQL connection, which, is, which has a red squiggly line. The reason is we have also to import the namespace system data dot SQL client, which is part of the NuGet package that we have imported earlier. So now everything is fine from this point of view. But what with this using statement here? Now, this is a very important thing to note because every time you read from a SQL database, every time you write to a SQL database, but even if you use a reader or a stream reader or a stream writer or a file stream or anything, that needs to perform some write and read operations, these are what we call unmanaged connections. And normally we would have to take care of these connections. We have to open them, we have to finalize them, we have to close them and so on. And especially if we work with several such connections at the same time, it might be that we close a connection after we already try to open another connection to the same database, for instance, and then we, we will get an exception that the database is locked. So if we use this using statement and if we wrap up everything in this using statement, the C Sharp will take care about all of this. So you don't have to take care about closing the connection, finalizing the connection and so on. So this is why you, we use this using statement. And here in the brackets, or in the parentheses, we have a variable named con, which is, or we create a new SQL, conne SQL connection using the connection string that we have defined earlier. Now we would need here three different things. First of all, we need this SQL connection and we created an instance of the SQL connection object. But then what we would need is a C SQL comment. Because if we want to retrieve some data from SQL, we need to run or to execute a SQL command. And in this case, we'll use another using statement. So it's using and parentheses, then var, and let's name it command. And this would be con dot create command. Okay, of course we need also to add parentheses here because this is a method and now everything works fine. So inside this second using statement, we will write down our SQL command. And I will simply paste the SQL command that we will use and I will try to explain each part of this SQL command. 
Now, SQL is a totally separate topic to itself and we'll surely cover the basics of SQL. But what we want to do here is select. So we want to select customer ID and company name and then count as order count. And we want to do this from sales LT customer. So that's the table that uh, we have seen earlier in Visual Studio SQL Server Object Explorer. And as see, this is the alias that we want to give to this table. And that's because of this alias here, we can use c.customerID and c.companyName and so on. And if you take a look here at sales LT sales order header, we have as SOH, which is another alias. And that's why we uh, this alias represents this table, sales LT, LT, sales order header. And that's why we could use this alias here. And then we perform a left outer join, which is a left join on customer ID. What does this mean, basically? It means, uh, let's imagine that we have a left table, which is the customer table, and a right table, which is this sales order header table. Now, a left join will take all the information or all the customers that we have in this left database and we'll join them with information from this sales order header where we have the same customer ID. Because customer ID in this sales order header is a so-called foreign key for that table. So this information will be then matched together in an output that we will see shortly. And then we do some sorting and filtering and we want to group by customer ID and company name and order in a descending order. So that's basically the SQL command that we will send and execute on the Azure SQL database that we have created earlier. Now, the next thing that we would have to do is of course, open the connection. Opening the connection is really not very complicated. We already, already have a SQL connection object, so we just have to open it. And that's it, now the connection is open. However, as the next step, what we need to do is we need to read some data. And for reading some data, we would need a reader. And you guessed it, we will wrap the reader also in another using statement. So it would be using var reader equals, and in this case, it will be command. And the SQL command has a method which is called execute reader. And that's it. And here in this using statement, we can simply go ahead and uh, we would implement a while loop while reader dot read. So while this reader still reads, what we will do is we'll print something to the console and I will paste once again the code here because it's a very long string and uh, it's uh, the ID and zero in uh, brackets, the name and then order count. And of course we would read this information from the reader. So for the first one, we'll get the integer. For the second one, we'll get the string that there is and then we'll get once again uh, the integer. And this should basically read the data that comes from this SQL connection. Now we are almost ready and the next thing that we would have to do is to add the console read line and the best place to add it would be here to make sure that we will keep the console open after the output is displayed. So console read line and save it. And now let's run this and see exactly what happens. And it builds up the connection. It connects to the SQL database. And as you can see, we get a lot of information here. So all this information is taken from our Azure SQL database using this select uh, command that we have edited earlier. Now, this is how you can simply connect and read some information from an Azure SQL database. 
As a next step, what I would like to do here is to briefly show how we can write some information to this Azure SQL database. And we will try to programmatically insert a new line in a certain table. To do this, we'll simply use the following code. And this time I will paste the entire code block since it's almost the same code as previously. The only main difference is that we have here an insert a SQL command and not a select like we had previously. And then we have, of course, to add something to the database. And here are the values that we want to add. And here are the column names, so name, number, cost, and price. We also open the connection and then uh, the inserted product ID and we execute that certain uh, comment. And afterwards, we write down what product was already added. So if you look at this code block and the previous one, you see this kind of pattern. We need a SQL connection object or instance. We need a SQL comment. Then after we have written our SQL uh, comment, we can simply open the connection and then in one form or another execute something with that connection. In this case, we write something to the database, we insert a new row in a table, and in the previous case, what we did was reading out something from the table. So that's the exact pattern that you would need to use always when you want to read something or write something to an Azure SQL database. Let's try to run this program once again to check exactly if the second part is executed correctly. We still have that console write line. And here at the end, you see that product ID 1000 was inserted. So we managed to insert this product successfully in our Azure SQL database. So that's pretty much how you can work with SQL connections in C Sharp. However, there are some things that I want to underline at the current point. First of all, what we did here was writing some I would call test code to check exactly how we can connect to a SQL database, how we can read data to that specific SQL database and write data to it. However, the code that you see here is something that you most probably very seldom use in your real programs, because normally we would use something that we called ORM, which are tools that are there or help us to better manage and handle connections to data repositories. And you could do, use libraries like Entity Framework or Entity Framework Core or an Hibernate. And you would use a repository class and that repository class would be then responsible to read data and to write data to that specific database. One other important thing to note is that most of these libraries like Entity Framework and the Entity Framework Core, they abstract away the entire SQL comments that we used here. And you would most probably use something like link, so language integrated query. And that's how mostly softwares or software is running today. So I personally very seldom run uh, or write code like this with, uh, with uh, SQL uh, comments that I would write personally in uh, this type of uh, comment. However, if you want to play around with SQL, there is another interesting way to do that. And let's copy out this SQL comment and I will show you how you can play around with it. And this is how you can also exercise your abilities in writing uh, SQL commands like selects, like inserts, updates and deletes. And for this, we're going to switch back to Azure portal. Here we have our DevRamp resource group and in this resource group, as we've already seen, we have this test DB. So let's click on it. And here on the left, you see something very interesting, which is query editor. And this is a place where you can play around with SQL queries on an existing database. The only thing that we have to provide here is the password that we set up when we configured the SQL server. And you can see that you have here 
a very simple editor where you can just write your select uh, queries or inserts or deletes and puts and uh, so on. And of course you can then run them. And as you see, what we get is basically the same result that we got also in our console application. Uh, the only thing is that here the results is uh, paginated, so we could click on load more and we would load more of this data. But that's exactly the same data that we got also in our console client. So once again, if you want to play around with SQL comments, with selects, inserts and so on, which I will strongly encourage you, then if you don't have SQL Server Management Studio, the Azure portal is a very good place to do that. And you can try out different type of, of comments and selects with different type of joins and so on and to check exactly how the results are displayed and uh, calculated. That's it. If we calculate the exact time we've spent on setting up the database and writing code, we'll see that it's way below 20 minutes. So that's how fast you, the developer, can set up a fully functional database. And more than that, when you don't need a database, you can take it offline and don't have to pay for it anymore. Just pay what you use. That's the cloud magic. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to this channel for more similar stuff. Also, check out the existing videos. You might just find something useful for you. A thumbs up would be also highly appreciated and your feedback is always welcome. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time I wish you the very best.